Hello and welcome to What The Football. We are back again with yet another video and a bit of a reaction slash rant to the Manchester United loss away at Manchester City. Strange because uh, Manchester United conceded three go and have scored three goals and come away with nothing. I mean, I can't remember any team actually like putting in like three goals away at Man City and actually getting zero points really. It's staggering. That like, shows, um, does it show how good City were going forward? Uh, or how bad Manchester United were defensively. Uh, before I carry on, please like the video and subscribe to the channel, of course. That's why we're here. I'm here to give you content. You're here to subscribe and watch said content. So if you could do that, much appreciated. Thank you very much. Um, I think Eric Ten Hag's got a big, big problem here. I, I genuinely do. And the reason why I do is because United obviously came, obviously went to Manchester City to play counter-attacking football which has been very successful over the last, I say last month, we haven't played in a month, but the last, um, ever since the Brentford game, ever since the Brentford game, Man United have been playing pretty much on the counter-attack and been very successful in terms of the results. Maybe not in terms of the performances, no, or not to what Ten Hag wants anyway, but in terms of the results. That tactic is obviously Eric Ten Hag's plan B. Eric Ten Hag's philosophy ingrained in him is the United's philosophy. It's playing with the ball at feet, sharp, sharp passing and movement, pretty much what Guardiola plays. And a result like I've seen in six goals away from home against one of your deadliest rivals normally culminates in a team going for a plan B. Eric Ten Hag's plan B has resulted in Manchester United losing six goals today, which is a big massive issue because does that mean he reverts back to passing out from the back and trying to play possession football or does he continue to play this possession football sorry this counter-attacking football in order for Manchester United to be successful in the short term because in the long term the possession football is obviously what he wants but does he have the players for it as well and I thought only one or two players came out of the game with any credit today. And I think the two players were Anthony and Martial. I think any every other player um, was easily um, can be easily criticised. I think Malassia undoubtedly had the worst game he's had in a Manchester United shirt. And I think quite rightfully he was taken off in the second half. Um, at the start of the second half. Although personally I thought Delo was just as bad. But I think for Malassia, I think one thing I'll say about Malassia is he's a young lad coming into the Premier League it's his fifth game he needs that Patrice every moment whereas with Dallo, he's on a booking and we want him to sign a contract so have we brought him off at half time it shows that we've got absolutely no faith in the lad um, which is not true but at the same time he conceded four goals in the first half I think one or two of the goals were his fault largely down to the fact that they were on his side I think a big massive factor as well in the um, in the demolition of the first half was when was Raphael Varane. And I'm a big fan of Varane. I think Varane is one of the best centre-halves in the world. And I do think that, I don't think he's been as bad as people have made out. I think he's been very good up to this point. But he wasn't maybe sharp enough for the first goal. I think the second goal, it, it, it's not his fault the second goal. I think him being on the pitch maybe doesn't stop Haaland scoring. But... The third goal, undoubtedly, was not a Varane error. But one thing I will say is that had he been, had he not been injured, he, pops, he possibly would, would have dealt with the cross. If he didn't feel like he could carry on, he should have come off. He should have just said to, they were going to come off. The result of that goal meant he came off and Lindelof came on, who, by the way, was absolutely abysmal when he came on. And I know a lot of people will say, oh, but Harry Maguire wasn't playing. I mean... I think Harry Maguire was playing, it could have been a lot worse. So, you know, be thankful of that at least. And Martinez against Haaland. Strange because Haaland didn't actually I didn't felt I didn't feel to feel like he targeted Martinez today. I don't think he targeted Martinez. I thought he actually targeted Varane. And maybe it's Varane's lack of fitness or the fact that he wasn't fit for the third goal that gave him that confidence. I don't know. I'm not saying Martinez was great, by the way, he wasn't. You know, when a defence concedes six goals. What can you say? You know, if, if a striker misses six open goals, it's not been a good day, has it? So, for a goal for a for a goalkeeper to defend to concede six goals, none of that back four or five deserve any credit whatsoever. On to the the positives, if there are any for Manchester United. One positive is the goal from Anthony, an absolutely fantastic goal. And to be fair, in the second half, he did look quite sharp. The one or two moments in that one, and the two nice little moments of play. 
Martial, when he came on, I thought looked pretty good. I know he scored two goals. I know they were both pretty comfortable goals, but I thought some of his link-up play looked all right. Sancho worried me. I thought Sancho against Walker would be the battle that could potentially win the game for Manchester United. Wasn't the case. I would not have played Eriksen and Fernandez. I think this is the game where you bring Casemiro on, who I thought when he came on, by the way, wasn't great at all. I thought he looked a bit off the pace. And I do think the fact we haven't played a game in the last three or four weeks in the Premier League hasn't particularly helped the development of this team. I think if you look at the development of this Manchester United side, Arsenal was a great springboard for a couple more results. I think we had Leeds at home next. I can't remember what the other game was. But I think the fact that the players haven't played in the last three or four weeks possibly helped the sharpness. Maybe, I don't know. I mean, City have played one game last three weeks as well, so see it as you will. Um... I thought, yeah, with Ericsson, I don't. I think Ericsson and Fernandez in a game like that, if we're playing counter attack, you can't play those two. You can't play those two if you're playing counter attack away from home against Manchester City. You need somebody else to shield the back four, as well as McTominay, who I thought was abysmal today. And I think now we are starting to see the the the, the true the, the true Scott McTominay. He's a decent player for an Everton. He's a he's a decent player for maybe a Villa or a Southampton. He's not a Manchester United level player. He just isn't. I'm sorry. He is a good player, but these people saying, oh, he's, just, he's our Darren Fletcher or he's our new Nicky Butt. Those two played in a completely different era, a completely different era where football didn't rely on passing and possession football. It relied a lot on being direct and 4 4 2. I'm not criticising Nicky Butt and Darren Fletcher's performances for Manchester United from the past, but that's where they are in the past. I think for a player like McTominay, I think he's a good standard level player, but I think when you're playing as a centre back for Scotland, when your position is midfield, I think that pretty much sums it up as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I thought Rashford would have was anonymous, and if Rashford and Marshall were both as fit as each other, I would have started Marshall over Rashford just simply because I know Rashford is a local lad and I know he, he knows this game, but at the same time, Martial probably offers a little bit more when it comes to coming deep and bringing other players into play. On to Manchester City. Um, I know we've been going on a little bit about Manchester United. But Haaland is something else. He is the closest I've seen to Ronaldo at his peak. And when I say Ronaldo at his peak, I mean Ronaldo is a number nine at his peak, which is probably Ronaldo under Zidane. I think Foden was very sharp. I thought Grealish looked pretty sharp, albeit it did help the fact that the, both the full-backs were on bookings pretty early on, but, you know, those two players were exploited by those players, so that would help. But this is not me being a negative, biased Manchester United fan here. I generally do believe that City play well because United do have a chance to play well. I thought Delo being on the bookings very early on actually shifted the game because a lot of this, because City prioritised a lot of their attacks on their left-hand side. And Delo couldn't tackle. He just couldn't tackle. If it, as soon as he tackled somebody, he was off. Which, if we played Man City a few years ago under Mourinho and Walker and Dalf were both booked after five minutes and Mourinho didn't exploit that. And that's where a good manager, a good attacking manager goes, you know what, we exploit those positions. And that's what Pep is. He's a, he's a terrific attacking manager. And, yeah, the league is sewn up in October. I know a lot of Arsenal fans who might be watching this might think, oh no, but we're still in the title race. Man, it's Man City's to lose. It literally is Man City's, to, Man City's to lose. And it's Man City's to lose, despite them not being top, which is, again, staggering. So, yeah. Man City title in, in October. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. I will be doing a lot more content, like I said, within, within the next few weeks. World Cup coming soon, after today. Honestly, before today... I was like, I can't wait for Premier League football to be back. After today, can have an international break, please. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel. Have a great rest of your day. I won't.